Well, 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 we back. We live and in an effect, and we looking for that respect. We back with Birds of a Feather, and we sure got ourselves together. It's week 13, and we gonna be on the scene. It's old Doc Hurst, we pulling it out the dirt. Them old eagles, they flying high. I believe our record now is 10 and 11. Yes, that's 10. I mean, no, 10 and 1. We 10 wins and 1 loss, and we're facing them old San Francisco Minus 49ers. Oh, yeah. And the sad part about it, and I guess I'm going to get into it a little later on, but I'm going to ask Mr. Izzy if he just step on in and get ready to tell us what's coming up. I believe this is the week 13 showdown with the lowdown. Is it week 13 or week 12? Which, which one is it, Mr. Izzy? If I'm not mistaken, it may be week 13, but what I do know is that the, the Eagles record is 10 and 1. First place. In the whole NFL, in first place in the NFC. So that's where they stand as of November 28th of 2023. Okay, so they 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 are number one in the NFC with the best record. And another thing I want to just look at is what's coming up in this Week 13 battle is that there seems to be a malfunction or a disconnect because it seems like we are a three-point underdog. True, true, true. That's what they have there. There, the the NFC champions are the underdogs, and there's no other place I'd rather have it. You be the underdog, no matter what you do, until you until you win it all. There's they they just they're gonna root for anybody besides you. So. A lot of people were expecting the Cowboys to go in Philadelphia and beat them. People thought Miami would go in there and beat them. And so now people are assuming that San Francisco is going to go into Philadelphia and beat them. So the Eagles are undefeated at home. They've never lost at home. And that's what the Eagles intend on doing and trying to get back healthy and maybe trying to add some more players. So all is well on the home front. Lane Johnson is trying to get his health together. God is trying to get back, and um, before you know it, you're looking to get back Dean and hopefully add some more plays to the lineup. Okay, so what okay. Do you think about it? Well, what I think is from the beginning of the season, we face the best coach in the NFL, and that was the New England Patriots, and they say he is the master of defense. And we went in there, we faced New England, and we came away with the victory. That's one people said they thought we would lose the first game. So we took that up. We beat everybody. We went down and got to, I think we played the New York Jets. And they come through there and they beat us. And uh, that was without, you know, a superb uh, quarterback. But we went on, we beat every team. And it seems like since we beat Miami Dolphins, we went on to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. We went on to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Now, we face some of the biggest quarterbacks there is in the whole league, and we've beaten them thus far. We've done it 10 and 1. And regardless how it looks, we got it done. We face some of the biggest quarterbacks, the biggest quarterback. Matter of fact, we beat the champions who had defeated us in the Super Bowl. We beat the Cowboys who say they're always the perennial champions or the ones who are fighting for uh, the first place seat in the NFC East. We beat them. We Now we beat the Buffalo Bills who everybody said they were going to be the ones that was going to come over and be in the Super Bowl. And now we're facing the San Francisco 49ers. It's like every game that we have to face to me, every game is like, oh, this is our biggest game. So I just got to the point. I'm just saying, you know what? Our next game is always our biggest game. Our next game is always our biggest game because it seemed like that's what they're throwing up every time. And all the while, it's steady getting it done. I mean, players are coming through from you got Jalen Carter blocking, blocking uh, field goals. You got... Uh, Big Davis running the quarterback out of bounds. I mean, putting every ounce to the bounce in it. You got guys coming in, slashing and dashing and getting interceptions. You got big play slay sticking on a man like some hot grits. I tell you, 
these guys, it's not just one man. You got that Bigfoot Elliot. He even stepped in on the scene. I mean, how in the world you kick a ball that far in the storm and the rain? I don't. I tell you what, man. It, it just don't get no better than this, and it keep on happening. But I'm waiting for the San Francisco to run up in there and talking about all oh, these. We are the underdogs, but that's okay, because I believe they're gonna have to pack their bags and move a little further. So, what you got to say, Mr. Izzy? Uh, I pretty much feel the same way. San Francisco has a, a chip on their shoulder from getting beat. In a championship, two of their quarterbacks were knocked out, and they 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 feel they feel that they were they feel that they didn't get a fair shake at the deal. So for them, this is their this is their big game. This is their Super Bowl. But this is like like it's always been said: every game has to be our Super Bowl because everyone from the commentators are pretty much saying this is the must see game. This is the one that proves who knows what. And every game is an MVP showcase that the Eagles and Jalen steps up for. And out of every game, we haven't played our best, but the players have never been the problem. A lot of it has been either coaching or play calling. And other than that, um, the players have been playing pretty well. Um, I remember that even this last game, there were so many of the Eagles fans were booing and mad with Jalen and mad with Brian Johnson as they only had 33 passing yards and everybody was upset the same way they were when Jalen was drafted but as time goes on you get a chance to see that you have to wait through the process don't make everything an emergency and and, and then when we, we let the chips fall where they may almost all the time and the majority of time the Eagles come out on top in the victory so to all the fans and all the critics and everyone making it more than what it is, keep the main thing the main thing. This is one game at a time. You play from beginning to end, and pretty much you should have confidence that the Eagles are going to go out there, they're going to do what they got to do, and they're going to come out the victor. And that's mainly what's been happening. And so I'm just not expecting or predicting anything different on my behalf. So. That's my take on this up-and-coming game of the Eagles versus 49ers. So, I feel good, feel great, and let's see how the MVP discussion continues on my behalf. Yeah, you know, I think when it comes to that MVP discussion, I think what they've gotten to the point is right now, and I truly believe this, Jalen is, is not concerned one bit about the MVP. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. You got a you got a, a wide receiver by the name of AJ Brown. AJ Brown could be in, ten, in contention for the MVP if he would insist on them throwing him the ball. Smith, a wide receiver, could be insisting on them throwing him the ball and being in contention for the MVP. Remember the running back Swift. Swift had in the third or fourth game he had more running yards than anybody. He had more running yards than anybody on a record-setting pace, just like A.J. Brown would. He could insist, give me the ball, let me run. I'm going to be the MVP. You go, you leave from him, then you go to Dallas Goddard. He said, hey, I need a little more playing time. Now you move from him, you look at Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter said not only could he be the rookie of the year, he should be an MVP. Big Davis should be. Fletcher Cox, what is happening? Everybody has has gotten to the point where they're not trying to say, hey, I need to be the MVP. they looking at, look, let's get to the big picture. Doesn't matter who got all the pump, the points running. Don't matter who got the points in sacks. Don't matter how, who got the points in, in interceptions. What we're going to do, we're going to play to win the game. And that's what, when you said that, like Jalen was trying to get him the, on the same page and saying, keep the main thing the main thing. We're here to win the Super Bowl. We got to get focused. And you see everybody is mine is getting on that because I'm telling you, um, all of those guys I named, any one of them could be in the running for the MVP. But what that is, that's divide and conquer, and it's about being selfish. And what it means is that Jalen may not have the yard. Swift may not get all the running. A.J. Brown might not get all the passes. 
and know everybody else may not be having a limelight constantly shine on them. But together as a team, they can beat anybody if they focus on it. And I believe that's the team uh that's the team goal that you want people to realize and see. Hey man, we're in a team. Let's do it together. Let's not worry about the individual accolades and we will conquer. And that's what the football game is seeing going on right now. Putting yourself aside, putting the team first, everybody getting on one page. And even though you're winning ugly, remember, you've got some big wins.